a production of the New Jersey Courts. State versus Shack is a New Jersey Supreme Court case. Uh, the defendants, Peter Shack and Frank De Harris, uh, were involved in providing services to farm workers in Cumberland County, and they um, were arrested and charged with trespassing. Uh, they were convicted of trespassing at the municipal court level. Eventually, the case went all the way up to the New Jersey Supreme Court, and in that case, uh, Chief Justice Weintraub for the court uh, issue an opinion establishing that farm workers uh, have the right to, uh, to be visited uh, by lawyers and or service providers, healthcare workers and social workers in the farm farms uh, where they reside. It's a very important case for the Hispanic community in the early 70s. And in that case, uh, our Supreme Court ruled that when it comes to ensuring people with human dignity and having access to justice, such as legal services, medical care, that it would trump an owner's property rights, which are fundamental under the Constitution, but it would trump if it was to ensure the well-being of human beings. And that resonates even through today. The case, I think, represents um, our court system uh, at its best. Um, and it and enhances uh, the credibility of the courts and the, and the judiciary with the community where uh, the little person, the less fortunate, uh, the poor, is able to utilize the court system um, and uh, uh, obtain a fair result. So State versus Shack solidified the opportunity for migrant workers and for Hispanics to live with dignity. Uh, to actually enjoy living in America, being an American. It allowed Hispanics with limited resources to know that they have rights too, and that there's people out there like Peter Shack and Frank Tejeras willing to go the extra mile to help them. It resonates through today in the areas of landlord-tenant rights, uh, where uh, governmental entities are allowed to go into a person's private home and conduct inspections for the welfare of people. And it also resonates today with what's going on with immigrants coming into this country and being denied health care and being denied uh, legal representation. Uh, um, so uh, New Jersey has always been at the forefront with that particular law and I'm quite proud of that decision. I was raised here in Atlantic City and my family, they have tax businesses and uh, I, I had the opportunity to work uh, in those types of businesses and see these people come in asking for help. And that's what I think State versus Shack did. It, it allowed people that maybe they didn't think they had those rights to seek out that help and, and, I, and, I, and I saw it all the time and just that courage for them to walk in the door and, and ask, hey, what can I do? Is there something that I can do? It did permeate into other areas of the law. For instance, the right to um, gather and protest at open malls, the right for a, uh, uh, the government to uh, enter into a private individual owner's premises to conduct inspections for safety reasons, because the overriding concern was always what is best for the public. Orgullosamente Latina, which means proud to be Latina. Um, so proud to be part of a, such a resilient and beautiful community um, that really unite when it's time to unite, especially in times like these. Um, unified by our language. Although we come from different parts and I come from Puerto Rico and I don't have to endure some of the challenges that some of um, people from like South America or Central America have to endure, I still empathize and I still feel their, their pain and, and we connect in that way and that connection is what it means to me. Our common fundamental uh, values that we hold as Americans, we share 
the Hispanic community shares throughout this nation. I'm talking about hard work. I'm talking about personal sacrifice. I'm talking about perseverance in the face of adversity. These are all things that we as Hispanic Americans and most particularly Americans all have in common. We look at people who have led fights on our behalf, such as Cesar Chavez. We look at people who have uh, uh, conducted themselves with dignity, such as Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. And it's particularly important to me as a Latina woman for children to be able to look at Hispanics and know that we uh, have achieved what we have done because of hard work and perseverance. I'm very proud uh, of, uh, of our court system, um, and the tradition of our court system um, in, in establishing opportunity and, uh, and to have, uh, first of all, a workforce that is reflective of the community. Uh, I'm an example of that. And if you walk around this courthouse, you will find people that are uh, Hispanic, uh, and, and every one of the um, uh, divisions and every one of our um, uh, uh, departments. Uh, so uh, uh, that's a very important component of what we do, providing services uh, and access uh, to the courts, to people that come in here that are unable to speak the English language. Uh, we do it not only for Spanish, we do it for all, the, all, the, uh, all languages. The commitment to access and fairness, uh, uh, not only in words but in action, is, uh, is uh, uh, something that we do every single day in our courts. Uh, we want uh, people from our communities, the people that we serve, to come into our courts, uh, to feel comfortable accessing the courts, and we want to make sure that they, they get uh, due process and they, they are able to understand the proceedings, to understand uh, uh, the, the, uh, the process, and to be able to have uh, their day in court.